Welcome everyone to the College Admissions Collaborative Highlighting Engineering and Technology College Fair. We're very excited to have you participating in this event tonight. We have a fantastic school here with us today. My name is Greg and I'll be your facilitator for this session. Before we get started, just a couple of housekeeping items to remind you. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. You can use the Q&A button on your screen at any time to type a question, and the presenters will be able to see that. There's, this is just one of many different sessions being offered tonight and this week, so please check back often. And the presentation is being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com slash cache, C-A-C-H-E-T, and I'll drop that in the chat if you missed that. I'd now like to turn it over to our presenter, Lynn, who is gonna talk all about Carnegie Mellon. Thanks so much, Greg. Hi everyone, nice to see you tonight. Um, my name is Lynn Javor. My contact information is over my shoulder here on the screen. So um, feel free to jot that down and you can um, send me any uh, questions or, or comments or anything uh, that you, that you wanna find out about Carnegie Mellon after the fact, and I'm happy to help. Uh, with that, I am an associate director um, in our Office of Admission for undergraduate students. So uh, really happy to, to talk with you all tonight. So what I'll do is I'm gonna start off with a, a really short video, just kind of introducing you to Carnegie Mellon. And then I will um, talk a little bit about our academics, uh, life on campus, student life, uh, activities, things that are happening here on campus, and then give you a little bit of information about our application process, uh, and financial aid. And then I'll leave hopefully about 10 to 15 minutes for questions. So I know that Greg mentioned there is a Q&A button on the bottom of your screen. So you can send those questions to me and I will answer them um, in, in that time. And if we don't get to them all, I'm, I'm happy to answer them uh, through email over the next few days um, and, and happy to keep the conversation going. So let me start it off really quickly with a video just to kind of give you a little introduction to Carnegie Mellon. So if you'll bear with me, I will share that with you. The makers, the dreamers, the scientists, the artists, the researchers, the engineers, the challengers, the game changers, the fearless. Today, we work. The myth debunkers, secures of cyberspace, and drivers of the driverless, the climate leaders, the energy shapers, and frontliners of artificial intelligence. Today, we work. The founders of new fields. The bosses of brain science. The smarts behind smart cities. The industry disruptors. Pioneers of planetary robotics. And architects of what's next. Today, we live it, breathe it, love it, write it, rewrite it, nail it, we hack, attack, move, groove, start up, start over, tinker, imagine, and dare. Today, we work. Okay, so that was just a little bit um, to, to get you uh, a little... Um, acquainted with Carnegie Mellon and hear from the students and the faculty about uh, what really makes us, what really makes us work here at Carnegie Mellon. So for those of you who uh, don't know much about us, we are located in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. The campus, which is uh, beautifully displayed behind me, is uh, in, an, in a neighborhood about, called Oakland, about maybe five miles from the city center. So you can hop on a bus. Uh, transportation will be provided on your ID card. So you can hop on a bus and be downtown downtown Pittsburgh um, in about 10 to 15 minutes, depending on traffic. Downtown is really a great place for cultural um, food, uh, lots of all the big shows coming through, the, the music shows, the art shows, really great museums downtown, lots of great food scene, really up and coming food scene here in Pittsburgh. Um, and of course, uh, lots of sports. So if you're interested in sports, we have professional football, uh, hockey, baseball, soccer teams all here in the city. So hoping that students will kind of 
branch out from campus and kind of get involved uh, with the city. So uh, again, we are located in a neighborhood called Oakland. Uh, the University of Pittsburgh is our next door neighbor. So really right next door. So the students at Carnegie Mellon kind of have the best of both worlds. The front of our campus is uh, sort of that campus type feel, urban type feel, and the back of our campus backs up to the largest park in the city, Shenley Park. So it's really great for students to kind of be able to um, experience both of those things. We are a mid-sized um, research university. So lots of research happening here on campus. And I'll talk about that here in a moment. But uh, we have about 6,400 undergraduate students and about the same graduate population. So uh, a really nice uh, sized campus of uh, and, and great mix of undergrads and graduate students here on campus. So I mentioned uh, research, which is, a, which is a really great thing. Lots of it happening here on campus, available to all students on campus. So whether you have are currently involved in research or maybe you've never even thought about research, but now that I've said it, you've thought maybe I should think about that. Lots of great opportunities to get involved in research here on campus. So. Uh, lots of students find it really easy to kind of get started by either uh, talking with a faculty member that they're, they're taking a class with about something that the faculty member is working on, or if you are working on research, you know, maybe talking about it with that faculty member and, and kind of explaining what you, what you see happening with that research, and, and they can kind of help guide you in that. We also have an undergraduate research office, which is dedicated solely to the undergraduate research experience, so really great opportunity for students to go and talk about research opportunities, how to get involved. They offer, um, they even offer summer grants. So if you're working on your research throughout the school year and you know you want to stay through the summer in our wonderful city and continue your research, uh, they offer grants so that you can, you know, afford housing and continue to live here and continue on with your research. So whether you're involved in research now or you're thinking about it in the future, this is a great place to get involved in research. The other really um, great thing about Carnegie Mellon is our interdisciplinary nature. So what that means is, uh, I'm gonna talk about the academics here in a moment. You will need to apply to a specific academic college but we are hoping that uh, during your four years on campus with us that you will get out from your home college and explore the other colleges and the other studies and programs that we have available to you and really kind of um, make it, uh, approach it interdisciplinary. So where you're um, kind of uh, enhancing your major program with other studies that maybe you've always been interested in or you're just now getting interested in um, to kind of uh, bring those things together. So lots of interdisciplinary work here, happening here on campus along with a really um, strong collaborative nature. So, uh, you know, lots of students working together, students, staff, faculty all working together. Um, so uh, those things are really, uh, you'll hear them a lot, interdisciplinary collaborative of nature, all of those things are really important to us here on campus. So let's talk about the different academic uh, programs. So we have seven academic uh, schools that you will that you can apply to. So we have our College of Engineering, we have our School of Computer Science, we have our Mellon College of Science, we have a Tepper School of Business, um, our Dietrich uh, College for Humanities and Social Sciences, we have our College of Fine Arts, and then we have our Information Systems. So what I'll do is briefly talk about each of those colleges so that you understand what is uh, what each of those colleges is about is is about, um, and maybe where the major you're thinking of lives. So I'll start uh, briefly with uh, our, our School of Computer Science. Uh, so uh, there are um, a few different majors within our School of Computer Science. So we have our general computer science track. We have our um, uh, computational biology program. We have our AI or artificial intelligence program, first of its kind in the country. Um, and our first cohort of those students should be graduating here in May. So we're really excited major, which is Human Computer Interaction, ACI, HCI. Uh, just starting this year, this is our first class uh, to come in for HCI, so we're really excited about that as well. A little bit about our computer science program uh, or our school is um, we are really heavily math-based. So thinking when you think about computer science um, and thinking about it uh, here at Carnegie Mellon, it is very heavy in the theories or the foundations of math. So while you'll learn a little bit about um, current programming and current things that are happening um, in the computer science world, what we're really trying to, to teach and trying to help you um, grasp are those concepts 
um, using math, the foundation and the theories of math to figure out uh, what problems are, are down the road that, that we're not sure of yet, but that we're going to need to be able to solve and how we're going to be able to solve those. So um, thinking kind of that way about computer science, the students actually here on campus call it math with a keyboard. So uh, again, very heavily based in math. Um, and so you can uh, note your interest, whichever one of those, um, you know, computer science, comp bio, whatever you're interested in, you can note that on your common application. Uh, and, but you'll have the first year to kind of go through um, an overview of all of those programs and then officially declare at the end of your um, first year here at, um, on Carnegie Mellon's campus. So you get, so it's nice you get the first year to kind of hear all the different things and learn all the different things about computer science. Uh, the next school I'll talk about is the College of Engineering. Uh, so uh, many different majors within the College of Engineering. So we have uh, mechanical engineering, uh, material sciences engineering, civil engineering, chemical engineering, and electrical and computing um, engineering. So uh, again, a really great opportunity for you to study many different types of engineering within that program, within that college. You will, again, get the first year uh, to kind of get an overview. So you'll take a class, your first semester, a class your second semester, giving you an overview of all of those different disciplines before you officially declare your major at the end of your first year. So and again, another great opportunity to understand all the different disciplines within engineering before you officially declare your major. Lots of hands-on work happening within our College of Engineer. Uh, one of the newer buildings on campus here, um, and they have a fantastic makerspace in the um, lower level of their building. So, uh, and students have access to that, um, you know, 24-7 um, really. Once you take a safety course, you can kind of get in there and, and do, um, you know, uh, work on projects and things like that. So I always uh, tell students uh, to check out their website, the College of Engineering's website. They have a video, a virtual tour of that makerspace on their site. So it's really great to be able to see, um, to see that space, uh, you know, if you're not able to visit campus, you can at least see it there. But the students, uh, like I said, have really great uh, opportunities for hands-on um, work. Also, lots of internships and co-ops um, within the College of Engineering. We had a student a few years ago who was a civil engineer uh, during, after their sophomore year, got the chance to have an internship working um, on the reconstruction of the George Washington Bridge here um, on the East Coast. Uh, so worked that whole summer, uh, really getting some hands-on work and, and some really great experience was asked to come back their second year and their first or second day on the job of that second year um, internship, they were given a, a pretty large, significant project to work on and kind of handed it and, and got the summer to, to work on that. So they, when we met with them and they talked about that, they expressed how really um, prepared they felt for that. And, you know, with their studies here at Carnegie Mellon, how great it was to kind of be up and running and kind of um, independently working that second year on that internship. So lots of great things happening in the College of Engineering. Um, so take a look at their website for more details on all of their programs. Uh, the Mellon College of Science, we'll talk about that. So that is uh, our sciences. Uh, so physics, chemistry, and biology, as well as mathematics live within the Mellon College of Science. Again, another school where you can be undeclared for your first year and then officially declare at the end of your first year. Uh, the Mellon College of Science a few years ago really kind of redesigned their curriculum, thinking about not only preparing you to be great scientists or great mathematicians, but also, uh, it always sounds corny when I say it, but great uh, humans as well. So there are lots of things within their curriculum outside of lab work, outside of classroom work um, to kind of broaden uh, your scope. So there will be a cultural aspect where you'll be required to go to an art show or a music show or um, some sort of show that you choose, and then you'll write about that. So you'll talk about why you chose that, how it impacted you. Um, and so just kind of getting that cultural aspect. There's a community service aspect to their curriculum. So where you'll work um, you know, within the community. And then there is also um, a lot of really great networking opportunities as well, where they will invite uh, alums back for, for lunches, networking lunches and, and things like that to kind of build those connections. So uh, the Mellon College of Science is really great um, for, for uh, that connection to their students. Their faculty is really involved um, with their students and, and making sure that they're uh, continuing 
continuing on to be successful outside of the classroom and labs. When we talk about research, while well, it is happening in all of our um, academic schools here on campus, the Mellon College of Science, as you can imagine, has many um, research projects happening within it. And I would say if you remove the, um, the math mathematicians or the math students from the population, about 90% of those students are involved in some sort of research. So great opportunity to get involved in research um, in that college. The next school I'll talk about is our Tepper School of Business. Uh, a little interesting, you'll, you'll receive one degree, all students receive one degree within the Tepper School of Business, and it's a Bachelor of Science in Business Administration. While you're uh, studying within the Tepper School of Business, you can study up to three different, or, or up to three concentrations, so things like marketing, accounting, finance, um, communication, entrepreneurship, all of those things um, are within our Tepper School of Business, and you can focus on as many or as little of them as you would like. Uh, so if, you're in a, if you want to be an accountant, major, you know, that that would be uh, what you would focus on. I mentioned entrepreneurship. They have a really great uh, center within the Tepper School of Business. So the entrepreneur, uh, the Schwartz Center for Entrepreneurship. Uh, it's a place for students to go and talk with staff and faculty, take courses, um, other students who meet with other students who have kind of been through the process of becoming an entrepreneur or, or thinking about becoming an entrepreneur. As you can imagine, there's not really a a uh, checklist or a one, two, three steps to becoming a successful entrepreneur. So this is a really great place where all students across campus, not just the Tepper students, but all students across campus can come and kind of uh, work through those ideas. Uh, also a newer building on campus with lots of um, big open collaborative learning spaces, uh, which is really great for that collaborative nature that, we, that I talked about earlier um, this evening. Uh, so next would be our Dietrich School. So our Dietrich College for Humanities and Social Sciences. This is basically Carnegie Mellon's version of a liberal arts school. So there are about 60 uh, majors and minors within the school. So things that you think uh, would live in a, in a humanities and social sciences school, like literature, English, history, all of those uh, are there. Also some interesting things held within uh, that school. So there are courses on machine learning, there are social and decision science, um, courses in that school and majors in that school. So lots of different things happening in the school. Lots of students uh, will, even if you're not enrolled in the Dietrich School as your major, will take lots of classes within that school um, just to kind of, uh, whether, they be in, whether they're interested in something or they want to enhance the studies that they're already taking. So uh, one of the really great programs in there is our philosophy department. Um, and when you think about philosophy, you probably think about studying, uh, you know, uh, scholars from hundreds of years ago, which you will do a little bit of that. But in the past few years, they have really taken on the, um, the understanding and built a coursework, a curriculum around uh, artificial intelligence and ethics within the artificial intelligence. So thinking about the intersection of those two, um, those two things and you know, how artificial intelligence impacts our daily life um, and the ethics behind that. So uh, it's really become a really popular curriculum, um, not even so much with the computer science students who are really you know, taking those courses and, and really enjoying them, but all across campus, uh, students are really kind of interested in seeing what, um, what, to, what we're learning about ethics and the, and the AI intersections. So um, lots of depth within the Dietrich College. So uh, definitely take a look at their, their majors and, and their courses. You can be undeclared in the Dietrich College for up to two years. So it's kind of nice you get to spend some time kind of understanding the different disciplines and the different studies within that college. Um, Next, uh, College of Fine Arts. So uh, we, I like to break them down into three, into two, um, two sections. So our visual arts and our performing arts. So our performing arts would include our School of Drama and our School of Music. These are really conservatory style programs. So these are the students who are looking to become professional actors or design, um, you know, production, technical directors, um, and in the School of Music, uh, professional musicians. So conservatory in nature, meaning they're really kind of um, taking mostly those courses. There is opportunities to take courses across campus, but for the most part, these students um, in the performing arts are really uh, focused on, on, on their craft, really. So uh, there are some uh, different... Um, application deadlines, I would tell you to be aware of if you are interested in the performing arts, they have 
uh, an earlier deadline than most of our other schools to allow for some opportunity for you to um, schedule auditions. But even if you're not uh, going to join the School of Drama or the School of Music as a, as a major, you could minor in their coursework or um, you could continue to stay involved in music or acting or design if you're, in, if you're doing that now and you wanna to continue to do that here um, on campus, you can take coursework from those schools. The other side of uh, College of Fine Arts is our visual uh, piece, which is the School of Art the School of Architecture and the School of Design. So um, our art, School of Art, while you will be learning about the history of art, it is really more focused on the current mediums um, and, and your work within those current mediums. Really great, you'll get to work with current artists. Uh, the faculty are all working artists. Uh, I always tell students to check out their website because they will show, highlight um, what, the, what the faculty is doing um, outside, of the, outside of their work at, um, as a faculty member. So it's really interesting to see what they're all involved in. Um, so if you're interested in the School of Art, take a look at their site. Um, and again, if you're interested in uh, continuing on taking art classes, um, you could definitely do that even if you're not uh, enrolled in the School of Art as a major. Our School of Architecture is a really great place uh, for students who are interested in that path. We have a four-year program and a five-year program. So the five-year program will allow you to um, receive your license or your certification. So when you graduate, you'll be ready to uh, head into the professional world. Um, you get uh, to work with, uh, again, working faculty, uh, and you'll get to, um, you, you get your own design space, your own architecture space, your own studio space. So you're ready to kind of um, uh, come and go as you'd like and work with other students and kind of uh, get that, that hands-on uh, knowledge and, and work uh, that you'll need when you head out into the professional world. And then the last school would be our School of Design. So uh, when you think about School of Design, there's, you know, every company really needs design, whether that be uh, product design or communication design, anything like that um, is happening within our School of Design. Again, I know one of the big things is students always talk about, they get a space to start their own space on their own design studio to kind of start working once they get here, which is really great. Uh, they get to collaborate with others and, and again, continue working with the faculty um, that are working faculty. Uh, the School of Design also does a really great career fair for their students uh, where the first two days that all the employers come in are just there to meet with the design students. And then after that, they open it up to the rest of campus for the rest of um, the students to meet with those employers. And then the last school I'll talk about is our information systems school. Um, this is really an interdisciplinary program, kind of grew out of our Tepper uh, Business School, our Computer Science School, our Humanities School. Um, so for those of you that were are interested in computer science, but when I talked about the really heavy math base and you thought maybe that's not the computer science I'm interested in, this may be more your um, speed, our information systems program. Uh, I like to uh, liken it to uh, this type of a scenario. So. Uh, on one side of the conference room table is the computer scientist. On the other side of the conference room table is the uh, manager. They're trying to work on a project together, but they don't really speak the same language. So the person sitting in the middle, um, the information systems graduate is the person sitting in the middle who has the computer science background, but also has the management project skills, um, all of that uh, where they can speak both languages and kind of make sure that everybody's on the same page. So as an information systems student, Student, you will get the computer science background that you need, maybe not as much of a deep dive into the mathematics and the computer science, but still enough that you'll understand it. And then um, you'll also get all the project management skills um, and things like that from, from the other studies uh, within the program to kind of be that, that consultant or analyst that can kind of um, speak, speak with languages to make sure that the project um, gets done. So uh, those are all the different academic programs. So I hope that gave you uh, a, a good overview of the different programs that are here on campus. So I'll talk a little bit about student life um, since, it's a, since it's a big part of campus here. So just uh, for housing, we'll start with housing and dining, the, the big things that students really wanna know about. As a first year student, you are required to live on campus here at Carnegie Mellon. So we have uh, all the different dorm styles that you think of. We have uh, the traditional dorms where there's two in a room and you know down the hall is the restroom and a, and a, a lounge area. So we have that. We also have suite style living where you may share a common space with a few other um, students. 
Uh, we have um, apartment style living as well, where a few years ago we purchased an apartment building here in, in the neighborhood and, and turned it into a residence hall. So that's more of like an apartment style living. So all different types of housing here on campus that uh, you may be interested in. If you choose to stay in housing, you can stay um, every year and housing would be guaranteed. But you know, with uh, the University of Pittsburgh being next door, it, there is a lot of off-campus housing available to students, which is, which is great. So if you'd like to look for off-campus housing, lots of students do that as well. And there's many opportunities to do that. As far as dining halls, we do not, this is odd, um, we do not have a traditional dining hall here on campus. I love it actually. Um, we don't, there's not like one or two places on campus where everyone will head at five o'clock to kind of wait in line and get their food and sit and eat. Uh, we have, I like to um, compare them to food courts, like mini mall food courts. Um, so a few of them in different buildings where you can go and grab, you know, different, different styles of food um, and then take them, uh, you know, and eat with your friends or take them back to your rooms or, or whatever you're doing. So it's a really great opportunity to kind of um, eat, eat great food uh, here on campus. And, and I think everybody, uh, staff and faculty included, also enjoy that. Um, so that's a little bit about student life uh, for housing and dining. There's lots of uh, residential education programs coming out of the dorms. So you'll really, your first year, kind of form your housing um, community. And lots of folks stay with that housing community. But it's really a great opportunity to get to know others that uh, may not be enrolled in the same school that you're enrolled in or from your hometown. Um, if you know, uh, you may, you'll get to meet lots of different folks here on campus. Um, so we also have, uh, as far as student activities, we have about 350 right now, student activities. So I always like to tell students, if you can think of it, it's probably here, but if not, uh, you can petition for there to be um, a club here on campus. So things like uh, drama and music ensembles for those that are not involved, club sports, intramural sports um, are here. We have a Quidditch club, a competitive knitting club, uh, lots of really great things happening here on campus in the, in the student activities space. We also have um, lots of other auxiliary services available to students. So we have a health services. We have our own health services here on campus. So you make um, appointments and see doctors and physicians. Uh, we have counseling and psychological services here on campus as well. So um, you can continue uh, to, to do that, those things if you're doing them now, or if, if you'd like to you know, start uh, meeting with those services once you get to campus, they're here and ready for you. So that's a nice, um, a nice uh, thing for students to feel comfortable knowing that that is here on campus. We also have an academic success um, center here on campus for students. So if you are looking for a little extra um, help in, in a certain class, you could, uh, you know, maybe there's a tutor or maybe there's an extra discuss, dis discussion class that you could get involved in. There's study sessions. Um, there's breakout rooms for you to kind of uh, book to study with groups, get group work done together. Um, so, or if you'd like to be a tutor or kind of run some of those discussion programs, those are um, available to students in our academic success center. As far as diversity here on campus and inclusion, we have a student um, center for diversity and inclusion. Um, and while the center is uh, really the kind of the hub for where that work is happening, it is definitely important to us here on campus, one of our pillars. Um, and so it is something that we are all involved in here on campus. But the center itself is really great um, for like a, a meeting spot for students um, to kind of get started in that, in that area. Um, if you're looking to kind of jump in there, uh, lots of really great programming coming out of there. One I'll, I'll talk about is our first generation program. I'm a first gen student. Um, so I know it's it's nice to have a group on campus where I can go and talk with others about things that maybe I'm, I'm, I'm not familiar with and, and my, my family can't help me with because they, they haven't been through the, the process themselves. Um, so that's a really great um, place. And you don't have to be a first gen student, uh, just like the rest of uh, the groups coming out of the center. Um, you know, they're looking for allies to be involved and staff and faculty are involved as well. So um, the center is a really great place to get involved on campus as well. So those are uh, lots of great things that are happening on campus. Um, there are some new athletic uh, or fitness, I guess I would say, facilities here on campus for students to use. There will be new athletic facilities um, so for students who are joining us in the fall of 2022, you should see those as a sophomore or junior come online while you're here, as, as well as some new dormitories um, while you're here. Uh, and as far as athletics, we are a division three school. So 
Um, you can still uh, be a collegiate athlete, varsity athlete. Uh, the only difference with it being D3 is there's no academic, no, or I'm sorry, there's no athletic scholarships for that, but our student athletes are um, just as competitive as other athletes um, across the nation, if not more so. Uh, so that's really great opportunity to stay involved in athletics if you're doing that now. So that's just a little bit about the campus. Lots of traditions as well too. So we're Scottish in nature. Our marching band wears kilts. Um, so that, that's a really cool thing. The um, one tradition I'll talk about is the fence behind me. You'll see that painted fence. Um, students paint that to uh, kind of promote their events on campus. Um, but you have to paint it uh, overnight in the cover of darkness. It has to be painted the old school way with a paintbrush and a can. Um, and so then once they're done painting it, the students will sort of live by it, I guess. Uh, they stay there 24 seven. There's usually a tent beside it. They'll sleep out um, summer, fall, winter, spring, all four seasons. Uh, they will stay until their event is over and then they will move on. And the next, um, the next group will come in and paint the fence for whatever they're promoting. So it's a really great tradition here on campus. Uh, it's right in the middle of our campus, so you can't miss it. If you come to visit, uh, you'll see it right there um, on the cut, which is what we call the green space on campus. Uh, and in the next couple of minutes, let me just wrap it up with some application and financial aid information, and then I'll leave a couple of minutes for questions here. So we are a common application school. So you'll file the common application um, and we have regular decision, early decision. So early decision deadline is uh, November 1st and you will uh, be notified of a decision December, usually around December 15th, middle of December um, with an enrollment date of February 1st. A regular decision deadline is January 3rd this year due to the holiday. Uh, and you will find out in late March, mid to late March of the admission decision along with your financial aid and you will be asked to enroll by May 1st. Um, so uh, the common application will be required. We will ask for uh, things that most of our, our peers are asking for on the common app. So uh, your transcript, we'll get some information from your high school about the classes that were offered and, and what you may have taken while you were in, um, in, the, in high school. Uh, we'll get uh, the common app essay, which you'll write. Carnegie Mellon will ask you to answer three short answer questions. Um, one is about collaboration. So you've heard me say that word a few times tonight. Uh, what do you think about collaboration? How do you view collaboration since it's such a big piece of our campus? Uh, we wanna you know, see, hear your thoughts on it. Uh, one of the other questions is sort of an open-ended question. So just tell us something about you that maybe we don't know or we can't see easily within the application. We really, um, we as, as counselors really um, uh, appreciate reading those, those question answers um, from you. So you'll also be asked to provide a counselor recommendation as well as a teacher recommendation. Um, and then extracurriculars. I've been really, um, I'm sure you've heard it from many other uh, admission uh, folks throughout the last year. Um, think outside the box when you think about your extracurriculars. We realize that uh, the, the pandemic has really changed the way you may have thought your academic uh, applications would have um, looked. So uh, just kind of think outside the box about things like um, if you're helping others study, you know, tutoring students, or if you took out a part-time job, or if you're helping around the house, we want to hear about all of those things. Those are all really important things um, that we want to hear that you've been doing for the past year. For the fall 2022 cycle, we will be test optional again. We were test optional this past year. We will continue that next year. So uh, if you have taken your SATs and, ACT and or ACTs and you feel that they support your application and you want us to see them, you can absolutely send them. If you were not able to take them or you don't feel that they support your application, there's absolutely no harm or no disadvantage to not sending them. Uh, we will be looking at applications again, as we always do holistically. So looking at everything um, in your application so not one test or score uh, will push you over the edge or, or hold you back um, from admission. So uh, keep that in mind when thinking about your test scores. And then the last thing I'll talk about quickly is financial aid. So Carnegie Mellon um, is a need-based only school. So that means we do not offer uh, academic scholarships, merit scholarships, or athletic scholarships. So what we'll ask is that you file your FAFSA, which is the free application for, st for student aid through the Department of Ed, as well as the CSS profile through College Board. Um, and we will take that financial aid application as a whole and determine your expected family contribution. 
Uh, so then we'll take our cost of attendance, subtract your, subtract your expected family contribution to get what is known as your financial need. We will meet that financial need, 100% of that financial need with a mix of grants. Those could be federal or our university grants or state grants. Um, work study eligibility, so meaning you may be um, given the opportunity or eligibility to work on campus to earn a paycheck to use towards your tuition or expenses or, you know, um, you know, supplies, things like that, um, as well, and then as well as the direct subsidized student loan. So a mix of those things to meet 100% of your um, financial need. I would say if you are questioning uh, financial aid, all schools, including Carnegie Mellon, are required to have some sort of calculator or estimator on their website. We use College Board's net price calculator. So um, you would use that, uh, kind of grab your taxes or your family's taxes from 2020. We'll be two years back at this point. So 2020 uh, to, to fill out those questions. It could take maybe about 15 minutes if you have that information available. And then you'll get an um, immediate response of what your expected family contribution could look like, um, an estimate of your financial aid offer. Um, so you'll have that. You can send those to us to look at if you'd like. We're happy to have conversations about uh, what, that, what that estimate looks like or what uh, you know, your financial aid offer could look like. Um, so keep that in mind if you have any questions about that. And the one thing I will say is I know I mentioned that the FAFSA is free this year, but also there are some changes to the CSS profile that just came through within the last uh, week or two here. Um, so if anyone uh, is filing the uh, CSS profile, we, we never want the uh, cost to be a barrier. Um, so if you need a, need a waiver uh, or would like a waiver, you can just contact our office. But this year when you're filing the CSS profile, they have instituted a waiver of their own. So for families who earn less than 100,000, um, so if your adjusted gross income is less than 100,000, the CSS profile will be free for you to file. So um, definitely keep that in mind when you're filing. Um, but if you, for some reason, um, don't meet that criteria and still um, are, are in need of a waiver, please just contact our office and we're happy to show those waivers with you. So I think that's all I'm going to talk about uh, tonight. I'm going to open it up for um, a question and answer session. Uh, we can uh, use the Q&A button. I know that Greg mentioned um, earlier, so it's on the bottom. So if you'd like to uh, send a question, that would be really great. And I'll be able to answer it here with the, the the last few minutes that we have left. So I'll give you all a second um, to see if you have any questions. And if not, I'll make sure to get you uh, contact information so you can follow up with any questions you might think of after tonight. So I'll give you a couple seconds to think about that. Okay, I'm not seeing any questions come through. I am gonna put in the chat our um, email. So it's, ad, it's admission at andrew.cmu.edu. So feel free to send any questions to that. We also live chat um, most days, Monday through Friday from usually about 8.30 to 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So if you're on our website and you see something um, and you have a quick question about it, feel free to live chat us or you can always call us as well. There is actually a question in the chat. So let me answer this um, for you all. They wanted to ask about AP scores. Um, and credits if they're acceptable to um, Carnegie Mellon. So we will um, accept um, AP scores uh, as transfer credits uh, once you're enrolled. So when you're filling out your admission application, you can definitely note those on there, but we're not using those as part of the admission um, process. But afterwards, once you enroll, if you do have those scores, you can um, submit them to our university registrar's office and they will take a look at them to see if they meet the criteria, criteria which the AP credits will. Um, and so they will transfer those in sort of as um, credit work uh, before you get started at Carnegie Mellon. And then we have another question. Um, do we have an ultimate team or an ultimate team as a club sport? I'm not sure. Um, they're, the club sports change sometimes, uh, but I would say check out our athletics page um, and you'll be able to see all of the different intramural sports and the club sports, as well as the varsity sports that are listed there. Um, but check those out and see if there is an ultimate team. I I do feel as though I've seen them on campus, but I don't wanna say that for sure, but definitely check out our athletics um, page and, and that will give you the most up-to-date information as to what um, teams and what clubs are there every year. 
Okay, I think that might be it for questions, which is totally great. And again, you'll have my email address, you have our office email address, and we live chat as well. So um, we're happy to help however we can. So thanks for having me tonight. Um, and again, if you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you, Lynn, for that. Just wanted to remind everybody, thanks for joining us tonight. Lots of information from Carnegie Mellon. When you close your final window, there'll be a link to a very quick five question survey, and we'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. We encourage you to check back on the schedule to see if there's any other colleges or universities that you're interested in. And you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all of the other sessions recording at strivescan.com slash cache, C-A-C-H-E-T. And I dropped that in the chat as well. Thank you everyone and have a great night.